If uh, I had a, um, somebody coming to see me and said, uh, I want to be a therapist and I want to work with men who've been sexually abused, I would say, that, say to them that there are a number of particular qualities that are important. One is to be able to manage strong emotions. Um, I think to be authentic, to really be authentic. Men who've been sexually abused can pick someone who's inauthentic a mile off. So it's very important to be uh, to be honest with yourself, to be really self-aware doing this work. It is absolutely a must to get excellent supervision. It's an occupational hazard doing this sort of work that you'll experience vicarious trauma, you'll experience secondary trauma. Much of the material that we hear um, is graphic. It is um, uh, of its terrible degradation that one adult has done to a child or a series of adults that have done to a child, and um, it's hard to switch off to that at times. So I think really good supervision, um, engage in ongoing training to get fresh perspectives, and we're lucky in this, um, in, to living in Brisbane, to get some really good training coming through around all manner of ways of working with people around um, severe trauma. Um, so I think, I think they're the sort of range of things that are really important. Uh, good self-awareness though, we need to know when enough's enough for us, when we need a break from doing this sort of work because it is fatiguing. If someone has a desire to work with a particular client group, I mean I think it's important to understand why, what's brought you to this point, um, what you have to contribute, what is, um, what I guess what the pathway here is, what resources, what skills, what abilities, what unique qualities you have that might be useful in the work. I think it's good to consciously recognise that and, and actually take notice of that. Um, so to do it in a way that is, to, to, to come to this sort of work in a way that, um, where you feel as though you have something to offer rather than just, you know, it's, uh, you know, one, one area of work. It's quite unique. There are special, special um, qualities about this work that I don't think is in every field, even within the field of sexual assault and sexual abuse. Uh, working with, with men, I think, is a different experience than working with women or working with youth. Um, so I think being, talking to others, being aware of your motivations, aware of your challenges, I guess, of areas that could prove to be difficult. Um, often one doesn't know till one's in it, uh, that what's going to be challenging and what's not, but there may be some aspects of other work, uh, say in working with adult men, let's say in disability or in health or mental health. Some of those same things, that you've, difficulties you might have experienced then, will still apply in this circumstance. Because men who've experienced sexual abuse still have mental health problems, still may have disabilities, still may have all of those other issues. It's all still useful and relevant, but they have that extra layer of, um, you know, trauma and, and abuse as, as a child and or as an adult uh, as well. So there's that complexity in the work that I think is um, significant. Come on board, but make sure that you're really, really willing to deal with your own stuff. Because if you're not, you will burn, you'll go hard, you'll get cynical. If, you, if you're not genuinely capable of doing yourself as a therapist, what well, you're gonna have to ask the clients to do, which is to be present to their stuff, to not be afraid of their flaw or their damage or their brokenness or their frailty or their inability to find an answer, to be able to sit with the discomfort rather than turn away from it, um, to, to ask for help when they feel like they need help uh, and to be vulnerable and go, am I doing okay? If you can't do that as a therapist, then don't do this work because you absolutely need to be able to do that. I'd say our own therapy, lots of training, read, mm -hmm. you know, kind of be well equipped with some good conceptual maps about what you're doing and have some good supervision as well so that you're not doing the work on your own. You've got 
support around you? If you're serious about doing this work, that you go and you do some tertiary study and that you uh, obtain the, the qualifications uh, and that you um, don't enter into this work unless you've uh, taken the time to make sure that you have uh, the best knowledge uh, behind you around doing this and develop the skills to do the work. Um, I think it's about talking with other workers already in the field about how they uh, came to be doing this work and what they found really, really useful in doing the work. Um, I think it's about being clear about what, what are the drivers for them about choosing to do this. What, 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 what you know, what is, is this uh, about looking at uh, you know, it's a question of helping, and that that's that's really useful. Uh, but it's about, in a sense of, so, under in what way are they looking to help or support people, and how come they're choosing this piece of work rather than maybe working in another area? For some people, there's a kind of movement across domestic violence to sexual assault, sexual assault, domestic violence, or from different uh, helping professions. Um, I think there really is. Uh, it's important that you appreciate the. Um, that some specialist knowledge around working in this area and working in the area of trauma but working with uh, issues of childhood sexual abuse, adult sexual assault, uh, adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse and that each of those has a particular body of knowledge um, and it's important to understand that uh, you you obtain the information, skills, resources and support to be able to do that work. I think it's also thinking about uh, where you can do that work. I choose to do it within an organisation where the main focus is working in this area so that I have people around me who can also provide the support and assistance and I network in with fellow professionals um, who are working in the area and I think that's really important. I personally wouldn't like to do this as a, a practitioner uh, on my own, a private practitioner because I think that it's, it's a, um, it's a sp I'd, I would want to have the space to uh, have the people around me to have the additional support that I needed to do, to do that work. Um, so I, people I can check in that I can help kind of ground me and orient me around this work. I think it's really important to resource yourself with what are the particular um, generic issues that come up for men um, quite often to be all over them and like I said to to actually feel comfortable to name some of those because it is I think it's harder for men to avert them initially um, yeah have have, a, have a, a very strong understanding of the barriers that you are going to come up against because they are it is it takes longer in my experience to establish a sense of of real trust um, with men to talk about emotional stuff, deeply emotional stuff. I think it takes longer because it's something that men are not generally socialised to do. So you have to be patient. I think it's more long haul work. What do you need to kind of continue to care for yourself in this work? And um, but but in saying that as well, not not to have an unbalanced picture, but there's also a lot that's really rewarding and important about doing this work as well. And being, you know, prepared, for being prepared to change in a, in a whole bunch of ways. Yeah. I think you have to have a strong sense of social justice uh, about the world. You have to be, you can't be naive, you've got to be open and honest and I think mature people need to come into this work. Um, that it's going to change your, your, your world view. Um, some people find it very difficult in that they start um, being overprotective about their children, about where they go, um, uh, who they go with, um, uh, not going places they had been before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think... Um, uh, it can have a huge impact on um, people's personal lives. That in my experience working in this field for a long time, uh, it takes a good two years before people start getting what they're doing, mm -hmm. understanding what it's all about. Um, that there aren't 
particular remedies there's not particular there's not it, it, i guess for people who studied psychology it's, it's often a huge um uh, challenge particularly if they've uh, studied um have been very clinical in their study and their practice um because um uh I think it requires a much more open way of seeing things and I think people need to be exposed to life experiences in a bigger way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest a student come straight into this work. Mm. Go out into the world first, experience other work, life, come back. Um, but for some people it, it, it does rock who they are. Um, I think um, because a lot of my work has been in this field um, and, and around social justice that I um, have a very broad understanding of um, what happened, well my sense of social justice and what's going on globally. Mm -hmm. I guess how perpetrators behave doesn't really shock me because I see it being replicated um, outside in the community, globally. It's just, um, it's a terrible thing, but I don't find it surprising. <laughs>